Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is my 2013 BMW 320i with a manual transmission, which I bought with a seized engine. Now, if you don't know anything about these cars, this model comes with the BMW N20 4 cylinder turbocharged engine, which in general terms is pretty reliable, except for the timing chain guides, which disintegrate due to some poor plastic composition that BMW did at the beginning of the run. And a lot of these cars are popping up with timing chain issues, check engine lights and all sorts of stuff. Now the car is in a great condition. It's 180,000 kilometers, so fairly low still. The owner said that he was driving it. It just shut off on him and the engine is seized. My immediate assumption was obviously timing chains, you know, you knocked off the head, head has to come off timing chains, that kind of stuff. So in today's episode, we're gonna try and figure out if my assumption was actually correct, whether this is a timing chain issue and whether this engine can be repaired. So let's start off by digging into this motor to try and figure out what went wrong and whether it's easily repairable. My hope is to get this back on the road for as cheap as possible, drive it for a little bit. It's a manual transmission, four cylinder turbocharged engine. It's gonna be loads of fun, but winter is coming. This is real wheel drive and I do not want to be stuck in the snow in Canada with this car, which means that we need to fix it get it out of here and get something all-wheel drive, like a proper Audi, for example. All right, well, I mean, this is a little bit interesting. Um, I was expecting broken timing chain guides, stuff like that, but I can't actually see anything wrong at the top of this motor here, um, which unfortunately probably means that the crankshaft is seized upon the bearing or whatever. To figure that out, what I'm gonna have to do is actually pull the timing chains off. So. We're gonna have to take a look inside the board, see where the pistons are. My hope is that when I loosen up the chains, and these are pretty tight actually, there's, there's like zero play in this. My hope is that when I loosen up the chains, I'll be able to actually spin the, the cams. So maybe the top end is good. Um, and then I'm gonna have to go down underneath, take the oil pan off and, and take a look at the crankshaft. So this doesn't really tell me anything at the moment. So I'm gonna, Keep taking things off until we get to some sort of an answer as to why this crankshaft is not spinning. So let's support the motor, get the mount off, and go take a look at the crankshaft. Uh, all right. Where do we hook the motor up? I'm guessing it's this guy here. Apparently you have to use your tow hook. Crying out loud. All right, BMW, come here. We got to talk about this. So it's one thing to not add a hook to the motor and make all of our lives very difficult compared to every single other European manufacturer who puts a hook right on the motor so that you can lift it up. Fine. Okay, you guys are doing weird stuff by all means. You want to use the car hook? Sure, that's great. But why the hell are you using the car hook from a different model BMW for this engine. Not even the same engine in a different car, different car altogether. How does that make any sense? How much vice beer are you guys drinking down there? This is nonsense. I had to go to the junkyard and go through 15 BMWs so I can finally find a mini tow hook that will allow me to lift this engine up. Are you guys nuts? Are you crazy? That makes no sense. Smarten up.
Let's see if I can get that all burn out. Yep, that's a hard no. Do I have to drop the whole subframe just to access the oil pan? Are you guys serious? Well, f it. All right, you feel like we skipped a couple of steps, so let me just explain. I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out what caused this engine to seize, constantly hoping that it was timing chain so that, you know, it's repairable and all that sort of stuff. You just saw me struggle to take the oil pan off, which is a massive pain in the ass because you have to lift the engine even further up just to be able to slide that oil pan off. And with the tow hook that I was already complaining about sitting on top of the engine, you have very little room between the motor and the hood to actually lift it up. But anyways, after a lot of struggle, the open finally came off. I was able to disengage the timing from the crankshaft and very obviously the crankshaft was still not spinning, which very clearly indicates that we have an issue with a spun bearing. Now, whether it's rod or crankshaft main cap bearing, doesn't really matter. The point is that we have a spun bearing which means this is not something I can repair with the engine in the car. Therefore, engine has to come out one way or another. Now, the really cool thing is that just as I was pulling this engine out, I was trying to find online some sort of a second motor that I can you know, buy and put back in the car. I actually found the same car at a local junkyard. Now, these are still fairly new cars. They don't really show up at the junkyard very often. Lots of BMWs, just not you know, so new. So I ran down there to see if this engine had damaged timing chains, if it was maybe blown out, seized or anything like that. I scoped the cylinders, I spun the crankshaft, everything seemed fine. Aside from the fact that that car was gonna disappear from the junkyard in two days. So let's go pull that motor out. We'll bring it in the garage and then start taking it apart and also take this engine apart and see what's the best thing we can do here. All right, I've got access to pretty much all of the bolts except for two. I've got a bolt right at the bottom here, which is under the stop 
for the eccentric shaft for the valve tronic and I've got a bolt right underneath here you can kind of see it at the bottom there which is currently being covered by the eccentric shaft itself to clear both of these for this one we're going to have to actually remove this stop it's a size 11 so not a big deal you just take this one out and for this one we're going to have to rotate the shaft so that we can get clearance to remove that bolt okay obviously this oil squirt is going to have to come out as well because it's sitting right on top we have to go straight down there but as far as i understand these oil squirters tend to clog up so actually this is a good time to soak it up in some solvent to rotate the shaft what we have to do is we have to use an allen key and rotate this warm gear right there which will help us move the shaft back and forth All right, everything's off the motor. The lower end is still not spinning. That crankshaft is stuck. So very clearly, this is a bearing issue, whether it's the crankshaft or the rod bearing. So it doesn't really matter. And as much as I'm itching to actually figure out which one failed, the fact is I've got to go ahead and rebuild this one because I need to put the engine back in the car and get it out of my driveway. So we're going to leave this one for maybe another episode. We're going to dig into it or maybe at the end of this one if I have some time. But for now, let's go repeat everything we just did for this motor to the junk motor because, yeah, this thing's filthy, all right? So I'd really, really rather take this head off of this motor, swap in the clean one because, as you saw, there's nothing wrong with the actual head. The problem is obviously the bottom end. So let's pop this head off, let's clean the block, and let's start putting everything back together so we can close this motor up. This is a good place to stop this episode guys i've got two complete engines apart on the floor in my garage that i obviously have to clean up and put back together in the next episode we're going to clean this up put it back together put it back in the car and go driving as always thank you so much for joining me if you have any questions on the content comment below and if you like what you see click the thumbs up if you want to see more click subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes all right i'll see you next time